Well, this is a very wide-ranging topic, the idea of um, best practice, and it would take in uh, the role of expert witnesses in courts. Matthew's probably a better um, person to speak about that from a practising uh, point of view. Also, the Environment Pro Protection Authority and its um, uh, accreditation processes would, would have to uh, come into account. But in 15 minutes, I thought the, the best thing I could do is to focus on one particular topic, and I've selected uh, standards of quality in environmental impact assessment. Because you'll appreciate that in Australia, even under the new EPBC system, it's, it's really a North American environmental impact assessment system with um, added bells and whistles, which means it fits within a philosophy of almost environmental protection by information on this sometimes naive assumption that if you, you put objective information before the decision maker, then they'll do the right thing with it. Um, so uh, in that system, the, the quality of environmental impact assessment and its documentation is absolutely vital. Uh, in terms of what can happen to you if you don't uh, follow best practice in this area, uh, we'll, we'll get to that, but there are a number of um, uh, problems. One is just simply that you'll come unstuck in reality, that is that what you say about the capacity of an ecosystem to absorb change or, or deal with change will simply be wrong and, and that will become obvious to everyone. That's probably the worst possible outcome, isn't it? But then uh, the, from a legal point of view as well with environmental impact assessment, uh, certainly in the United States where our model of uh, environmental impact assessment originates, in the United States, an environmental impact assessment that is flawed in, in terms of quality can be overturned in the courts. So I'll just go into that topic in a little bit more uh, detail.